Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the game Llama Land. Normally I don't mention the designer of the game, but for this one I'll make a quick exception. It was created by Phil Walker Harding. I have several other games from him in my collection and they're always very nice to play. If you see his name on the box, you'll know it's a good one. Anyway, let's get to Llama Land. Here's how it goes. You are going to play until one player does something that triggers the end of the game. Then you finish the round and take out the scoring pad to count up everyone's points. Whoever has the most points wins the game. You get all your points at the end of the game. But first, what makes the game end? That could be two things. Either there are only four or less of these tiles left, the land tiles that look like Tetris shapes. If that happens, you finish the round and then it's over. Or there is only one type of llama cards left. You can see these three columns of cards here. If two of these columns are gone, that also ends the game. And what do you get points for? You can look at the scoring sheet for a reminder. You get points for all the llama cards you have collected. As you see, each llama card has a number on it. That's how many points you get for it. Count up all your cards. You also get one point for each food token you still have left at the end. There's corn, cocoa and potatoes. One point for each. If you have any of these money tokens left, then you get one point for every two money you have. And finally, you get points for bonus cards. These blue and purple cards. During the game, you can place one of your own markers on one of these cards. If at the end of the game you have what the card is asking for, you get those bonus points. If you don't have what the card is asking for, you get no points for it. And don't forget that you need to have placed one of your own little markers on it at some point during your turn. Let me quickly repeat that. The game is over when there are four or less of these tiles left. Or if two of these three columns of llama cards are gone, you get points for these cards, one point per food token, one point for every two money, and points for bonus cards. Next, how do you play the game? What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you must take one of these tiles and place it somewhere in your own area. You can choose which tile to take, it's up to you. You can turn the tile or flip it over. And it's also up to you where you place it in front of you. You can place it anywhere next to another tile, as long as at least one of the squares on the tile is against one of the squares on the other tile. Or you can even place it on top of other tiles. There are some rules for that, I'll explain those later. But when it's your turn, you must take one of these tiles and place it in your own player area. The only detail I can already tell you is that when you place your tile on top of other tiles, you can take everything that you have just covered up. So, for example, if you placed a tile that covered up two squares that showed a corn, you can take two corn tokens from the supply. That's it. If you cover up food, you can take the food. If you cover up money, you can take money. If you cover up houses, you can take one of these cards with people on them. They give you special abilities during the game. Either take one from the open ones or the top card from this deck. If you take one of the faced up cards, immediately place a new one on the table. So when it's your turn, you must take a tile and place it. And then, if you want, you can do two more things. 
You don't have to, but you can. After you have placed one of the tiles, you can take four of your same food tokens and take one of the cards. So, if I pay four corn tokens, I can take a llama card with corn on it. Or if I pay four potato tokens, I can take the top llama card with potatoes on it. The columns go from high points to low points, so keep an eye on them and the other players. After you have paid and taken one of these cards, you must take one of the little wooden llamas and place it somewhere on a field, one of the spaces that doesn't show an icon. You can choose which field you want to put it on, it's up to you. So again, when it's your turn, after you've placed a tile, you can pay four of the same food tokens to take a llama card for points at the end of the game, and then you take a llama and place it somewhere in your own player area on a field. You may only do this once per turn. And another thing you can do when it's your turn after you have placed one of the tiles is take one of your own markers these little tokens in the color that you chose during the setup and place it on one of the bonus cards. You don't even have to have what the card is asking for. You can place it even if you're not meeting its requirements yet. Just try to do that before the game is over. But before that, you can place one of your markers on any of the cards. Or, if it's already there but it's in a spot you don't like, you can pick it up and place it somewhere else. On a different spot on the same card, or just a completely different card. It's up to you. When it's your turn, place one of these markers or put it on a different space. You can have only one marker per space. Let me quickly repeat that. When it's your turn, first you must place one of the tiles against one of the tiles you already have or on top of them. And then, if you want, you can pay four food tokens and take a llama card for points and place a little llama on the field. And if you want, you can place one of your own markers on the bonus card for extra points at the end of the game or move the marker from one space to another space. Keep in mind that you do not have to have what the card is asking for. Just make sure that you do have it at the end of the game. Now, some details. As I've said, you can pay four food tokens to take a llama card. If you want, you can pay two money instead of a food token. So, for example, if I have two corn tokens, I can pay those two corn plus four money. And then I can take the llama card with corn on it. Then I have paid with two corn tokens plus two times two money as a substitute for corn. Also, if you happen to have ten or more food tokens, you must feed a llama. You can't save up all the food tokens. As soon as you have ten or more, you have to discard at least four to take a card and place a llama. Next, as I've said, when you put a tile on top of an icon that shows houses, you can take one of these cards with people on them. If you cover up two icons of houses, you can take two cards. You can take cards that are open or a card from the deck, that's up to you. From then on, you can use each card once per turn. To help remind you, you can turn the card sideways or upside down to indicate you've used it. When your turn is over, just put everything back to normal. But again, you can only do what it says on a card once per turn. You are allowed to use more than one card during your turn. And finally, how does it work when you want to place a tile on top of things? Rule number one. You can't put it on top of a hole or have it hanging over the side. 
When you put a tile on top, it must be fully supported. Rule number two. If you really want to put it on top, but you have one or more holes under it, you can use one or more of these square tokens to fill up the gaps. You get three of these at the start of the game. You can use all three in the same turn if you like, but it's best to use them in emergencies. And when you place one of these squares on top of an icon, you do not get the reward. And rule number three, when you place a tile on top, you're not allowed to place it on the same tile. Otherwise you keep stacking it higher and higher. You must place a tile on top of at least two other tiles. And of course, when you place a tile on a level where there is already another tile, they must touch at least one square. So again, when you place a tile on top of things, no gaps or hanging over the side. You can use one or more of your little square tiles to fill up gaps if you have to. And it must be placed on top of at least two other tiles. Done! This is how you play Llama Land. Keep an eye on those llama cards because if someone else takes one, you get one that's worth less points. And keep an eye on those bonus cards. I hope you feel you have a good sense of how to play this game and that you'll enjoy it. When it's over, it's fun to see this little landscape with levels and llamas on them. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.